Hey, welcome back to Cheating Wife, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for cheating stories like this. Would I, 38 female, be an idiot if I got back together with my ex-husband, 37 male, who cheated on me 10 years ago? When my ex-husband, whom we'll call Mike, and I were 14 years old, our relationship started and ended when we were 22 years old, respectively. We have two children and are the parents of two children, 15 female and 11 male. Every three months, my ex's job needs him to travel across the nation for a week, which he does all over the country. It just so happened that he happened to run into one of his employees on one of these occasions. Because our relationship was so strong, I never imagined he would be capable of anything like this. After returning home, he confessed his sins without hesitation. I would have been completely unaware of what had occurred if he hadn't told me. It was only after he begged for forgiveness that a divorce was finally granted, stating that he still loved me and that it had been a mistake on his side, but that it would be reasonable if I wanted one, which is precisely what I did. It was a pleasant conversation, and he went above and above to provide me with more than I had anticipated, house, child support, alimony. Despite the fact that it took some time, we were eventually able to re-establish communication and develop a beautiful co-parenting relationship. Mike is a wonderful parent, and his children adore him and his wife, as well as him. Three years later, I tied the knot with him, and he was very supportive throughout the whole procedure. He had changed his mind about having children with me after my second marriage ended two years earlier, and this was the reason for our divorce. I want one last baby. Mike has spent a significant amount of time with us since the lockdown. Our friendship is strong enough right now that there is no need for us to impose any visits or other responsibilities on one another. Because of this, things have been becoming hotter between us in recent months, and we've started having S as a consequence. I'm a woman with wants, as well, and to be quite honest, he's still the most lovely person I've ever met even after all these years of being married to each other. It's almost as if our bodies were designed to be in perfect sync with one another from the beginning. I remembered him making a joke about us being like Prime Pippin and Jordan in bed, and when he did it again, I felt like I was back in those heady days of our relationship. We weren't planning on it being anything more than physical, but now that we're here. Only a few hours previously, he had discussed the possibility of us reuniting with him over the phone, I received the most passionate speech from him ever, in which he admitted how dumb he was the night he cheated on me and how he had never stopped loving me in the ten years that had passed since that night. I couldn't say anything since I was taken aback, so he just smiled and said, it's alright, I'll wait, before walking away and returning to his apartment. I'm now resting in my bed, thinking about what to write. To tell you that I don't care for him would be to tell the truth to you. To say that the preceding few months haven't been the happiest of my life would be a lie to myself and to the rest of the world. And I'd be lying if I claimed I'd never forgiven him for breaching my trust by having an affair with another woman while I was pregnant. I informed him that I had done so in the past, a number of years earlier. If I had to make a decision right now, I would leap out of bed and drive to his home where I would welcome him into my family. It takes all I have not to do so. He's one of my favorite individuals in the world. In this scenario, though, I would want to make use of my cognitive abilities. The following are some of the benefits of bringing him back, despite the fact that he is an excellent dad, his children might benefit from his spending more time with them in the future. Without a doubt, this is an excellent source but he maintains that he still wants to have a family. I still have feelings for him that haven't subsided. There are some disadvantages, but I'm not sure what they are just yet. Perhaps some of you can help me figure it out. Would you mind sharing your opinions on the best course of action for me to pursue? When we first began sleeping together, I was the one who took the initiative and initiated the relationship. Update, since then, Reddit has provided me with some excellent suggestions, most notably from the nice Redditors who personally messaged me. I am grateful for their assistance. Thank you to everyone who has offered assistance. 
The fact that this cause exists makes me glad since it has helped me to remain calm and fight my cravings. Mike received a text message from me the next morning in which I conveyed my want for time and space to think about the situation. In his words, I've already waited 10 years, so I'm prepared to wait even longer. My heart started to melt as I thought about it. When the children awoke, our son was frantically hunting for his father in the surrounding area. He's reached the point in his life when he looks up to his father and idolizes him. But I understand why, Mike is, after all, a fantastic parent who deserves our support. Throughout the morning, our daughter had been giving me the evil eye. In the afternoon, when our son was in his room playing video games, my daughter confronted me about Mike, and I was caught completely by surprise. The most she said was that she was aware of what was going on, guess we aren't that cunning, and that she didn't want our arguing to have an impact on their lives, which I could understand. She mistook us for a gang of warriors, and she was right. Now, the divorce has had an impact on her, but not in the manner she had anticipated at the outset of the process. No, I'm not going to mislead myself into thinking she wasn't wounded, but I am confident in our capacity to deal with the issue in order to guarantee that she received care as promptly as possible and that her life proceeded in the most normal way possible. We did our best, or at the very least the best we were able to. Afterwards, I said that we were not engaged in combat, but rather that we were on the other side. We had discussed the prospect of reuniting in the last conversation. After that, she expressed her happiness at our achievement and voiced the hope that this time it would be for the long haul. I sent my children up to my parents' home the next day so that I could have a private talk with Mike at his house the following day. We had a lengthy discussion about how we felt about one another and what we wanted to do about it in the future. It was a very good chat. Several members of the audience inquired as to what he meant to do the next time we encountered a snag particularly in light of the fact that we are expecting our third child. He informed me that the night he cheated on his wife continues to bother him ten years after the event occurred. He said that it was not worth it, and that continuing with it had been the worst mistake of his life up to that point. Whenever we were experiencing difficulties, he promised that we would speak about it as adults rather than as children in the future. We should also consider attending couples counseling once in a while even when things were going well in our relationship, according to him. I thought this was a fantastic idea. To shorten a long story short, we came to an agreement on several aspects of our talk that I would want to remain confidential. The two of us have decided that our children will take precedence over anything else and that we will continue at a gradual pace throughout this process. He has no plans to move in with us at this time, but he would want to come and stay with us for a few nights every week or two. Later that night, we took the kids down to the basement and told them what had happened to them. Given that she was previously aware of the circumstances, our daughter said nothing, but our son was ecstatic with the news. In part as a consequence of our divorce happening when he was a newborn, he was unfamiliar with the notion of both of his parents being together. They surely had questions, which we were able to provide answers for them. We also want to provide family counseling to make the transition simpler for everyone who is affected by it. My mood right now is typically upbeat. I'm looking forward to the future. Despite the fact that Mike made a poor choice 10 years ago, I do not hold it against him, and I have forgiven him entirely and unreservedly since then. Now that I know how much he cares for me, I know that he will never abandon me again if he doesn't have to. I've just reconnected with the love of my life, who also happens to be the father of my children, and I couldn't be happier about it. Even as I'm writing this, Mike is in the next room with our son, who is now engaged in video game play. Whether he has a promising career ahead of him is debatable, but I am glad that he has returned. Firstly, thank you so much for the tip, Reddit. When it came to our chat and how we would go in the future, it was quite beneficial. It is my intention to remain online for an hour or so to answer questions until the children are asleep and he has gone for the night, and then it will be my turn to have a wonderful time myself. Peace.